we come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we find comfort, in sorrow hope, and in death resurrection. We will continue with the order of services outlined by the family. We will have a reading of scripture of Psalm, the 23rd Psalm, by Minister Dr. John Kennedy, followed by a prayer. Then we'll have the silent obituary reading. Then we will have acknowledgments by family.
you will have a problem. I 
She was also busting for me. Why did you drive my car? <laughs> Why did you drive my car? Why did you do this? Why did you do that? And I was like, I will never drive my car. <laughs> that was a lot. I did. Okay. So, um, and while we were driving, you know, she would see people on the corner, and she always would say, you know, I feel so sad today because that would be me. And I'm like, okay, you prepared your life differently for me. So this would never be me. You worked very hard. You were very well. I am charged with this great 
sides of the trying to do justice and give words for such a great woman as I knew as Sister Valerie when I had the opportunity to talk to Lisa, Sister Charlotte, and Cody on, on this past week in preparation for the words that I was going to say. There were certain things that they expressed unto me about this wonderful young lady. See, I remember when I, the moments where I would preach and Sister Valerie would be in the back of the church on that last row. And as I was walking out to begin to greet everyone, she would begin to tell me of just the great joy of the word that maybe God had used me to deliver and just was expressing all of the things that she happened to be going through. One of the things that I normally always try to do is try to connect to the person that I have been tasked with giving the eulogy to. And being that this woman was an aunt that seemed like an extraordinary aunt and a second mother to most of her nieces and nephews, I began to connect with that because I can relate to having an aunt that was my second mother, an aunt that spoke life into me. And so then they let me know that one of her, her favorite color was white, that she loved during Christmas time, a white Christmas tree. And for those of you who don't really understand that what color white, it's a color that reflects all of the light that comes from the natural light of the sun. So it reflects, while the color black absorbs, white reflects. And so in thinking about her love of the color white, I want to kind of go to an idea that she reflected the love of God to everyone she came in contact with. So for a scripture, I would ask that during your time that you wouldn't mind reading all of John 14, but I'm just going to pick a few verses from John 14, beginning with verse number one through three. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, I would have told you so. That I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when everything is ready, I will come and get you. So that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way and where I am going. Verse number 12. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works. I have done an even greater works. Verse number 27. I am leaving you with a gift. Peace of mind and heart. The peace I give is a gift the world can't give. Mm -hmm. So don't be troubled or afraid. We could go to God in a word of prayer. Father, we love you and we thank you. Lord, I ask that you speak your word to my heart. Speak your word to my mind that I may speak your word to your people on this day as we come and celebrate the life of Sister Valley. Use me now. In your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 So in the beginning of this text, Jesus is telling his disciples, I am going to prepare a place for you. So one of the things that in order to prepare a place, you have to do some preparation. The word prepare tells you that preparation needs to take place. One of the things that in listening to the life of Sister Valerie, one of the things I realized is that she was always preparing her family and having coats and providing a meal. In order to do that, she had to be prepared. How did you prepare? Well, Sister Valerie was dedicated to her job at the post office. She was there. They declared at social events. Sister Tuddy may have shown up late. But for, uh, for the post office, she was there. She was dedicated, working hours, countless hours. Why? Because she understood by doing what was necessary, she would have the resources available to prepare her family for having coats, for having meals, for getting cars for when young people were going off to college. So she had to do what was necessary in order to prepare her family for what God had for them. One of the things I want to share with you is if you really want to truly uh, live to the life of Sister Timmy, one of the things you have to be, do, be diligent in is being dedicated to whatever God has called you to do. If God has called you to be a 
mother, be dedicated to it. If God has called you to be a father, be dedicated. Why? If you want to say, Sister Tully, I love you and I want to celebrate your life, I want to be prepared like you, that means you have to be dedicated with the same sense of dedication that Jesus was allowing his disciples to know. I am going away, but please don't let your heart be troubled. I am going to my father's house. Why? So I can prepare the room for when your arrival comes. So Sister Teddy gave the reflection of God's love for you. Why? Because she wanted to prepare a way for you, for you to realize everyone at some moment in time will have to face this great challenge of leaving this planet. But if you've done things that God has asked you to do, you can rest assured that there's a place prepared for you. The thing that I love about Jesus is that later on in verse number 12, he declared, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done. Jesus wants everyone to know, yes, we may not see him physically, yes, we may no longer see Sister Tully physically, but you can do the same work. Why? Because Jesus is on the inside of each and every one of us. He wants you to realize, I did this work so that even when you don't see a body, you know my love is still there. The love that Sister Tully reflected to you is still available for you. Well, how do I know? It's because it was God's great love that worked on the inside of her to love you. And God wants you to know I am still on the throne and now she can find rest from all of the pain that she was going through. All of the strife that she was going through. I know it seems like 65 years isn't enough, but God wants you to realize rest assured those 65 years she impacted you in such a way that you can leave this place with your head up and head Why? Because you realize you can do the same thing in your community, that you can love on people, to the nieces and nephews, when you have an opportunity to be an aunt, to be an uncle, you better love on that child the same way that they loved on you, because that's how you reflect the love. God is saying that same word is available unto you. But the last thing I want to leave with you is verse number 27. Though that no man, I won't preach before you long, because why? She already lived her sermon and her eulogy before you. And so that last verse, verse number 27, says, I am leaving you a gift. <laughs> Jesus was letting his disciples know, I am preparing to go to the cross, go to the ground, get up with all power, go back to my father, but I'm leaving you a gift. What is the gift? I am leaving you the gift of peace of mind and heart. See, there's a certain thing of peace, peace, wholeness. When you've done everything you could possibly do, and you know you did the best that you could, you can be at peace in realizing, I did what I was called to do. I gave all that I had so I can leave you with peace. Yes. Sister Teddy wants you to realize she gave all that she had. Even in the midst of her body breaking down, she still would love on you. Even in the midst of retirement, she would still make a way and prepare. I don't want to know. They would spoke to me. She would call people just to say, I'm thinking about you. You know, there are a lot of people who declare that they love you. They declare that they're thinking about you, but they can't even pick up their phone to give you a text of I that takes you five seconds. Sister Teddy would give her, her loved ones that she loved a call to let them know I'm thinking about you. I just want to share this with you. Before you make your way off to school, make, before you make your way off to work, why? Because she wanted you to realize this love is real. That's right. Jesus is saying unto all of us as we Say that five. He wants you to realize that there's a peace that the world can't give and the world can't take away. That those 65 years of her being sister, friend, a daughter, a auntie, how to say unto you, rest assured in peace because she reflected the love of God to each and every one of us. And you have the opportunity to reflect the love of God when you leave this place. Lord, we love you. We thank you and we adore you. Lord, we thank you for the life of Sister Tay, Sister Valerie, 
Lord, I ask right now that you continue to comfort this family, that they'll find joy in the midst of everything that they're going through. That when the phone calls stop and the cards start, stop coming in, allow them to rest assured that you've gone to prepare a place for Sister Valerie, and that you've already have gone to prepare a place for each and every one of us so that we can have the peace of mind and heart. Thank you. We love you. We pray for you. Son of that, we pray. Amen. Amen. This time we will be from inside. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, unless a brain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single brain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there my servants will be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor me. Almighty God, to your hand, we commend your daughter, Valerie Teddy Curry, ensure and serve the hope of resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. This body we commit to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, yes, says the Spirit. They will rest for them like for their labors, for their deeds will follow them. May God have grace and peace to give this man. I will now turn it over. 